What is up, guys? Oof, I need a shave today. I've been running around like crazy, um, and I wanted to just quickly give you this Monday video here and talk a little bit about seizures and some other things that you should be thinking about. I'm going to kind of list them out for you and just to kind of maybe get you thinking a little bit and get you, um, you know, looking beyond the patient that that's seizing, right? It's not just they have a history of epilepsy or maybe it's a fibrosis. Yes, those are causes, right? But there are other things that you should think about. And and that part of um, the uh, free guide that I posted, I just published and, and, and uh, put out there called Your Patient Didn't Read the Textbook. Uh, you can download that for free and get goes over all common call types like seizures and will give you sort of differentials that you should be thinking about. You can go check that out. I put a link in the notes here, and that's at uh, emsseo.com forward slash DX. So I want to go ahead and kind of just um, go over some of these things here, all right, for you, and maybe give you an idea of other things you should be thinking about when it comes to patients that are having seizures. Now, of course, like I said, you've got your epilepsy. You've got your febrile seizures for patients six months, six years, right around there. But what about things like CNS issues, like CNS, CNS trauma, CNS lesions, masses, right? Those are things that can cause seizures. Uh, strokes, right? Drug overdoses, drug intoxications, drug withdrawals, right? Those can cause seizures as well. Um, hypothermia, hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, which is low sodium, that all can cause seizures as well. Hypotension, hypertension, hypoxia is a big one as well. Guys, these are all things that can cause seizures in your patients, which is why it's so important to do our assessments and to think about the bigger picture, to think about our patient assessments and what we're looking at. Other things that can cause seizures, you get infection, meningitis, encephalitis, um, Metabolic issues can cause cause seizures as well. Of course, you know some things. Some things you think about, guys. When you deal with patients with seizures, don't force stuff in their mouth, especially during the seizure or when they're in a postictal phase. Um, and always, guys, listen. You get a patient that's over fifty years old and they're having a, a seizure activity with no prior history of seizures. You should kind of consider there might be a cardiac or a stroke etiology going on with these types of patients, okay? And guys, look out for partial seizures as well. That can be things like just a muscle twitching and an isolated digit or an extremity, uh, kind of uh, neurological complaints the patient may have, maybe a, a, a speech or visual uh, hallucinations, right? Those are types of partial seizures, repetitive movements, movements as well. Um, you know, hand movements or even speech patterns or even chewing, okay? All these types of things, guys, can be uh, included in your seizure um, diagnosis and what you're suspecting is going on with your patient, okay? And things that you should be thinking about when you are assessing these patients. So I'm not going to go too much into stuff today, guys. I wanted to just kind of keep this short video. I know it's Monday. We're all kind of getting back to the swing things. Um, but again, this is a segment of that free guide I put out there. Your patient didn't read the textbook because we all know that our patients didn't, right? And everyone that calls up for a chest pain or difficulty breathing is not always going to be a heart attack or an asthmatic or a COPD patient, right? There's a lot of other things that we should be thinking about and considering when we encounter these types of patients. Okay, of course, there's a lot, lot more, right? Um, and maybe if something you think about that might cause a seizure, I didn't mention in this video, be sure to go ahead and post it below. I can actually add it to this resource and this way people can download it and it'll always be kind of like a living sort of document, right? So let me know. I'll be sure to add stuff like that to the document if I miss something or I can put it someplace else in that guide. Okay. So guys, go check that out. Again, I put a link below. If you want to download this, it's free. You can put it on your phone. I have it uh, made so you can kind of link and jump to different areas if you need to be, if you're trying to figure out what might be going on with your patient, kind of building your knowledge base, things you might want to pull that up during a call. On the way to a call, let's say you're going to a seizure call, pull out the guide, click on it, go to the seizure area, and kind of maybe think about things that you should be thinking about when you get to the scene and you encounter the patient and things you can be ruling out 
or ruling in for these patients. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, again, emsseo.com forward slash DS. Go download the guide. Um, until next time, as always, I am Jim Hoffman from EMSSEO. Stay safe.